Joining me live this morning is Brian Alexander. He's a trained pilot and aviation law expert with Kreinler and Kreinler, who has investigated numerous aircraft accidents over two decades. Uh, Brian, including a crash that involved this same aircraft, is that right? That's right. Uh, good morning, Sue. Um, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And uh, I uh, just want to extend my condolences to actually the whole Buffalo community and beyond for just a significant loss uh, to two wonderful folks. And uh, But we have, we have been involved with investigations of uh, this type of aircraft before, including one in uh, nearby Rochester that uh, has some eerie similarities to uh, to this one. I know it's very early, but what stands out in your mind right now about the crash of this aircraft on Friday? Well, you're right. Of course, it is very early. There's so much more that we don't know, um, but there are a few um, you know pieces of evidence that have been released publicly that at least. Um, will be the types of things we would expect the investigators, both the FAA and the NTSB, to hone in on. First of all, we know that there was a period where communications were lost uh, during the flight, and um, you know that suggests obvious things. You know, we could have had a frequency improperly tuned up. It could have been a mechanical uh, issue with some of the avionics, uh, or it could have been a sign of, of some type of uh, uh, incapacitation s- setting. Uh, uh, up in the cockpit in, in this particular case. That's what happened in our uh, in the Rochester uh, family's case where we had an aircraft at the same altitude. Pilot became non-responsive. He had a depressurization due to a design defect and uh, an uncontrolled crash at a, at a high rate of speed just like this one. So that's certainly something to look at. Um, but typically the NTSB, once they are uh, fully engaged, has sort of like, it's like an ER, they have a whole checklist of things that they will try to rule out in order to focus in on uh, on what the cause actually was. Would you know, Brian, if there was any communication between a pilot, Steve Barnes, and any towers uh, while that flight was underway? Well, there were. Um, you know, and when the last one was? Yeah, there was... Um, um, a series of communications is as typical. As I mentioned a moment ago, there was a loss of communication. Uh, there were several uh, of the towers and the approach controls that were trying to reach Steve uh, for a period of time. Uh, he did uh, respond eventually, received some further guidance to head to the airport. And uh, it was shortly thereafter, as he was being directed to the airport, uh, where there was uh, inexplicably at this point no further communications and um, uh, shortly after that, the aircraft uh, lost control, rolled to the right, and, uh, and uh, descended from a significant altitude at a significant uh, rate of speed. Uh, we're speaking live with Brian Alexander from Kreinler and Kreinler. Uh, we looked at an activity log from FlightAware of this particular flight, and you can see wild fluctuations in the airspeed uh, from 200 miles an hour to 900 miles an hour in the span of 30 seconds, you know, going up and down. Is that normal? Uh, certainly not. And, um, you know, w- <clears throat> one of the things that uh, is a little risky early on is to, is to make much of a conclusion as to relates to the radar data, uh, flight aware data. Like I said, it's all public. You have to actually see um, you know, more precise data that should be later available. Obviously, those types of radical fluctuations are not normal. Uh, do indicate uh, a likelihood that there's either a problem with the aircraft or for whatever other reason the pilot's having difficulty uh, controlling uh, the aircraft. Again, it could be anything from a mechanical failure to a flight control failure to an autopilot anomaly that uh, commands the aircraft to do something that the pilot is not intending to do, which is what we saw in those recent MAX air crashes involving much larger commercial jets where the pilots were unable to control the aircraft because of some automation. So... It's a real complicated, uh, will be a real complicated investigation, as you heard the sheriff just say. Uh, you know, the wreckage is, uh, is, in, is, is disintegrated, so that makes it more complex to deal with. But um, there are good experts that will be engaged for that purpose with the board. Yeah, the wreckage is being sent to, um, to Tennessee. The altitude, Brian, the plane was cruising at about 28,000 feet for a long period of time, and then that sudden out-of-control descent. Is, is the 28,000 feet anything out of the norm? No, this is um, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, a high, what we call a high-performance uh, aircraft. It is pressurized, meaning the cabin, just like the commercial aircraft that we all fly, or used to fly day to day. Um, you know, it's, it's capable to do that. Uh, that's a normal cruising altitude. 
It's actually right around the same altitude. Uh, the aircraft, the similar aircraft was at the other Cicada uh, that we're dealing with now is that when it had its uh, upset and loss of control. Um, so obviously pressurization is, is something I'm certain that they will be focused on. Uh, it's something we know there's been issues with the aircraft uh, before. And, um, you know, that's the type of thing where you can get the combination of perhaps a pilot becoming incapacitated and not realizing it. Uh, or you can have a rapid decompression, which can result in uh, in this type of an event as well. So it's it's uh, a little too early to say, obviously, but um, you know that's uh, there's definitely indications that something something terrible happened up there um, in that moment of time where aircraft control was lost. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the NTSB, as you know, is not on the scene. The FAA is handling that aspect. Is there anything concerning about that? Um. Y- y- N- not really. Uh, you know, the FAA investigators, uh, first of all, there's always uh, a combination of the uh, you know local law enforcement, the FAA and the NTSB, uh, typically on site uh, for these matters. And um, it, it is, it is um, you know, it's a, it's a labor-intensive task. The FAA investigators will have the same task as the NTSB investigators will. They, may, they will not be in a position to maybe make as many determinations on site as the NTSB could make in certain situations. But here, the critical thing will be, be taking measurements, retrieving as much as the wreckage as possible, uh, you know, making sure that's, uh, uh, that's as intact as possible so that it can be reconstructed to the maximum extent. And uh, unfortunately here, we're hearing that there's no black box, as, as you often hear about in these types of crashes. There, there will be other data on some of the uh, avionics um, and, uh, and systems on board, chips and such, that, that will provide some information. We hope that those are able to be retrieved. Those will be really important to find and protect and preserve so that they can be downloaded for that data. Do some planes like this have black boxes? Um, you know, a black box is actually something now that you can get in the aftermarket. Um, and, and, again, this is a you know, fairly expensive, high-performance aircraft, but they... Um, you know, there's no mandate to have the black boxes, so typically they, they don't. Um, and like I said, uh, but it is something that can be, you can configure the aircraft to have one, uh, and, and there's different types with, uh, you know, different levels of data that can be loaded onto the boxes. Uh, but I don't believe that this one had one. And that's true of the avionics. We we're not exactly sure yet what type of systems were on this 2009-era uh, Cicada TBM uh, aircraft, but, but that will become known as well. Brian, we really appreciate your insight. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Sue. Have a nice day. You too. Uh, Brian Alexander, he is a trained pilot and an aviation law expert with Kreinler and Kreinler. We'll continue to follow this and bring you the very latest.